God has pre-programmed seeds in this way. And if it's seeds, it's the word of God also, because the word also is a seed. God has pre-programmed the word in this way, that the faith to produce what it says is in the word itself, and it'll produce it exactly as it says it. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 all the way to third verse. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. One of the best definitions available on faith is here in uh, verse 1. It says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, let me just comment on things, you know, first, and then we'll go back into substance. Now, because it says substance of things, a lot of people are turned off immediately. You know, many good Christians are turned off when you talk about things. They think things are things that you shouldn't talk about on Sunday mornings in church. They're all right from Monday to Saturday. Uh, Monday to Saturday, they're really striving for things. <laughs> but Sunday morning, uh, they have a Sunday morning mentality many times. <laughs> they don't want you to talk about things because they think uh, spiritual life is not about things. And we shouldn't uh, 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 focus on things. And the things that are things that must be put on the back burner and kind of uh, relegated to an uh, inferior position. We don't need it, you know. We don't, we don't have to pay any attention to it, they think. But uh, the Bible does not uh, uh, think so, because the Bible talks about uh, things a lot. Uh, because the Bible says many, uh, there are many verses that refer to the things that God has prepared for us. For example, 
Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 33. You don't have to turn to these verses. You may just note them down. Matthew 6, 33 mentions things. It says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you. Particularly, it's talking about material things if you look at the context. The context is, don't worry about what you shall eat and what you shall drink and what you shall be clothed with. And in saying that, he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Another scripture is Matthew, Mark chapter 11, verse 24. After that verse about the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. After that verse, Jesus says, uh, therefore, when you pray, what things soever ye desire. See, he's again talking about things. You see, whatever thing it may be, a spiritual, uh, maybe spiritual things, uh, material things, uh, things that has to do with your family life, things that has to do with your uh, financial life, uh, whatever it is, what's, what things soever ye desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Another scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. It says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has ever comprehended. The wonderful things that God has prepared for them that love him. The wonderful things that God has prepared. God has prepared many things for us, spiritually and materially in every way. God has prepared wonderful things for us. Not just forgiveness of sin, but beyond that, many things God has prepared. One, Second Peter chapter 1 is one more verse that I want to uh, quote here. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. I don't want to quote the entire thing. It says that uh, he has given to us all things pertaining to life and godliness. Once again, the word things appear there. Uh, I can go on. There are many other passages which talk about things, 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 that particularly the things that God has prepared. Now, people think that this kind of teaching focuses on things and uh, and it tries to make the people focus on things to get some things, you know. It's a very worldly type of teaching. It is not so. Our teaching is focusing on only the things that God has prepared for us. Uh, God wants us to have these things. And so we are, uh, we are not trying to get things that God does not want us to have. We are focusing on things that have been prepared for us through redemption that is in Christ Jesus. You know, in verse 6 in Hebrews chapter 11, you will see that it says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. That's a verse that's familiar to all Christians. But have you ever thought about why it's impossible to please God without faith? There is nothing else about which the Bible says like that. It's about faith, the Bible says that. Without faith, it is impossible to please. Only about faith it is said that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Do you know why? Have you ever thought about why? It is impossible to please God without faith. Because God has gone through a lot trying to prepare wonderful things for us, for our spirit, soul, and body. He has sent his son. He died on the cross, gave his life, shed his blood, died a very horrible death, became cursed for us, took our sickness upon him so that we may be well, took our death upon him so that we may live, took our poverty upon him so that we may be rich. He went through a lot to provide a wonderful life for us, in spiritu spiritually as well as in material terms. He went through a lot. Now, after going through all those things, God has established a church, put pastors there and teachers there, and apostles, prophets, and evangelists there to proclaim these things, and sent the Holy Spirit to help us interpret the scriptures and given us the Bible you know, where we can read about these things that have been prepared for us. The New Testament is about the things that have been prepared for us through Jesus Christ and his redemption on the cross of Calvary. After having done all of that, if nobody pays any attention to it, if nobody will dare to believe the promises of God and possess what God has promised, it's like uh, the people of Israel not possessing the land that God had prepared for them, the land of milk and honey for which he delivered them from Egypt and wanted to take them there. And these people never wanted to really go there and believe it and possess it. They had a difficult time believing it and possessing it. And then the first generation never reached there. That didn't please God. God was displeased with them because of the lack of faith. Grace has provided so much. Grace has been so good. But they wouldn't show even one ounce of faith 
God has done so much, but they wouldn't even show even a little bit of faith in what God has provided. That is why the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God, because faith is a good sign that a man takes what God has done seriously, appreciates what God has done, and wants to possess all that God has prepared for him, and that pleases God. Suppose you went through a lot in your life, preparing for your children, many things, to come, uh, many things for their life. You know, you give them a land, you give them a house, and you give them money, you give them good education, you give them all these things, you know, the, everything that you can provide at best, you know, uh, according to your ability, you've done everything. Keeping them in mind, you've lived all your life, and uh, your mind was full of them only. And you lived for them, and you provided every for them, every, everything for them, and they grow up, and if they'd never had even an ounce of appreciation for what you've done, and if they don't possess what you have prepared, and use and enjoy those things, and live a life that you'll be happy to see them live, how would you feel like Would you be pleased with it? You will not be pleased with it. That is why the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God, because faith takes what God has provided. Grace has provided faith is the process through which we take these things. If you don't show faith, that means you don't have any appreciation for what God has provided. So there's nothing wrong with things. You know, it's not wrong for us to have things, it's wrong for us, for things to have us. The Bible says you can't serve God and mammon, God and money. But you can have money serve you and God. Because that is what money is for, to serve you and God, you know. It just serves us, it's our servant to do what we want to accomplish in this world, you see. It's just the right perspective that the Bible talks about. The Bible never condemns things. The Bible condemns wrong perspective on life because wrong perspe perspective means it leads you to wrong things, all right? Now, if God has provided so much, then one of the, one of the most important things that you need is the knowledge of what has been provided knowledge of what has been prepared for you. Because without knowledge of what God has prepared, how are you going to possess it, you know? So the Bible, the New Testament particularly, is promises concerning all that has been provided for us, you know, all that we must possess, our promised land in Christ Jesus and through Christ Jesus. That's what the Bible is about and all that we must possess. So. The whole process of how faith helps us to possess these things is the thing that we're going to talk about today. Now, you know, teaching on the law of faith, I've been showing how faith worked as a law. And then I've been talking about how God has put faith in the word. Faith is a spiritual power or force. It's the force that created the worlds, verse 3 says, like we read. The worlds were framed by the word of God. The power to create everything that we see today was in the Word of God. That power is called faith. God has put faith in the Word. So the Word is fully loaded with faith. And that Word that is loaded with faith is like a seed, the Bible says. That's why Jesus came up with that parable, the mother of all parables, the parable of the one who went out to sow the Word. It says, the sower went out to sow the word, and the seed fell on four different kinds of ground. That which fell on good ground produced 30, 60, and 100 fold, he says. So, spiritual life is, is really summarized in that parable. It's like this, he says. The kingdom of God is like this. It's like a man who went out to sow, and he sowed the word. So, the whole Christian life is based on this fact, that the word is sown in our hearts, and as a result of word being sown, whatever is there in the word becomes fulfilled in our lives. We take the promises of God for healing, for whatever it is. We take it and sow it in our heart, which is the soil, so that the word produces the very thing that it says. Uh, this is what uh, the kingdom of God is about, he says. Now turn with me to Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. We'll, we, uh, it has been called the law of Genesis. 
Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. I just want you to notice that God created everything, all the plants and the fruit trees and so on, this way. That is, that they will have their seed in themselves. That's the first thing. Whose seed in itself. itself. The second thing about, it, about that is, that they should produce after their own kind. Let's read the second verse. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed, according to its kind. And the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself. Notice that according to its kind. And the seed is in itself, according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Two things. One is, he created every plant, every fruit, every fruit-bearing tree in this way that they must carry the seed in itself. That's the first thing. The second thing is that those seeds will produce after their, after their own kind. Exactly. After their own kind means they will produce or reproduce exactly as they are. Now, this is the law that God has established in creation. Not only did he establish it, establish it as a law, the Bible says he saw that it was good. He called that law good. Now, let's take note of that. You know, these are not ordinary uh, statements. God saw that it was good. Now, we don't take it very seriously, some of these things. But you should, because God saw that it was good. He saw some meaning in it. He saw some significance in it. He was, the Bible is not trying to teach us agriculture, you know. We have not come, in, come here uh, for a violum volum show, you know. In Tamil, they used to have that program, you know, about agriculture on TV. We have not come for that show. We, are, we have come here to learn spiritual things. The Bible is about spiritual things. That's why the way the Bible begins in Genesis chapter 1 is very significant, you know. The Bible doesn't uh, go through scientific explanations about how everything came into being and all of that. And everybody has only that kind of questions, you know. Tell me how this happened, you know. We don't know, you know. Yeah, I'm not a scientist, you know. I'm a preacher. And the Bible is a spiritual book. It explains certain things spiritual. So the Bible simply begins in the be and says, in the beginning God created the heaven and earth. Believe it or not. He created the heaven and earth. And then it straight away goes on saying, there was darkness, there was chaos, there is emptiness, and talks about how he fixed it. That's the way the Bible talks about it. It introduces the whole uh, topic by talking about how God fixed things that were not right. Why? Because he wants us to learn how to fix things that are not right. Because in that chapter only it is said that he, we are made in his image and likeness and we are to do exactly like him, fix things that are not right in our world, in our life, and so on. So the Bible has a different perspective than most of us uh, are used to, you know. So the Bible is not trying to teach, teach agriculture here. It is trying to teach spiritual life. So what two spiritual principles come out of these two earthly principles? That every tree has its seed in itself and they produce after its own kind. What are the spiritual principles behind it? I will tell you that. The principle is this, that God has put within every promise the seed that will produce what the promise says. The seed of faith that will produce what the promise says. With every promise of the word of God. See, the word of God is like a seed. And if you take any promise of God's word, say, for example, the Bible says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. That's a promise of God's word. God says, I'm your healer. The very first promise God gave as soon as the people of Israel crossed the Red Sea is this. Their salvation is accomplished. They've been delivered by the blood of the Lamb. They cross the Red Sea and they come on the other side. And he says, look, I want you to know this. From here on, I'm your doctor. I'm going to take care of you. I am the Lord that healeth you. I'm going to take care of your physical side of things. I'm going to give you good health. I'm the Lord that healeth you. Now, that's a promise. Now, in that promise, see, that promise is like this. It has got the seed within itself. Seed means what? It has got the seed of faith within itself. It has got enough power 
in those words, in that promise, there is enough power to produce whatever healing that you need for your body. Amen. Because God made seeds like that. And since word is a seed, are you listening to me? Since God made seeds like that, since God made trees and plants and fruits like that, and since the word is spoken of as a seed, I want to tell you that the seed for your healing is in the promise itself. That's the first principle. The second principle is this, that that seed, that that faith that is in that promise, that power that is in that promise to produce your healing will produce healing exactly as it says. It will not produce something else, you know. It will produce exactly what it says. If it's healing, it's healing. I remember when I was very young, I remember one fellow said, careful when you ask for the Holy Spirit, sometimes you may get evil spirit. <laughs> now, this was very commonly spoken of in those days, you know. Be careful because we don't know what kind of spirit you got. You ask for the Holy Spirit, are you sure? Did you get the Holy Spirit? Maybe you got the evil spirit. Well, Jesus himself said, how will the Father give, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, a stone when you ask for bread, you know. But these people believe that, you know. Bible says that the seed is in itself. The promise of healing or promise of whatever benefit or blessing you take from the word of God, the power or the faith to produce what it says is in itself. And it will produce it exactly the way it states it. It's healing means it's healing, you know. It's not some kind of sickness. It's healing it'll produce. If you go to a, a, a copying place, you know, we call, it, call them Xerox, you know. It became so synonymous with um, Xerox, who invented the copying machines, you know. Now we call them Xerox, you know, whatever machine they are. Uh, so if you go to a place to Xerox something and you make a copy, are you going to proofread the copy to see if anything changed? Because you copied it. Because copying <laughs> is based on this principle. Copying happens uh, in such a way that whatever is in the original is copied exactly. There's no difference. You don't have to proofread it to see whether anything has changed in this. Nothing can possibly change. You're just going to get a copy. What the principle or the law of Genesis in Genesis 1, 11 and 12 says is this. It says that God has pre-programmed seeds in this way. And if it's seeds, it's the word of God also, because the word also is a seed. God has pre-programmed the word in this way, that the faith to produce what it says is in the word itself, and it'll produce it exactly as it says it. That's the two things that God wants us to learn from it. The faith to produce whatever it says is there, and it will produce it exactly as it says it. Now, this is what spiritual life is based on. That's why the law, the parable of the sower is very important. That's the key. That's the central parable uh, explaining Christian life. And uh, we may look at it some more in the course of our teaching here. But that's the central parable because that's the central thought. That's what Christian, that's how Jesus describes the Christian life. He says, the kingdom of God is like as if a man went to sow and he sowed the seed of God's word, he says. Over sin, he is conquered, hallelujah. He is conquered over death, victorious, hallelujah. Victorious over sickness, he is triumph, hallelujah. He is triumph. Sin, he's gone. 